During the first impressions of Gintama video that I did a couple weeks ago, I mentioned that the reason I liked the show so much was its comedy, and that the comedy was done in such a way that the whole show worked really well as an episode of comedy. Now, I know people will say that the serious arcs what make Gintama shine, and while that may be true, its comedy is what has made me love it at least so far. Anyway, during the process of making that video, I took a break from watching Gintama not wanting to have to change my opinion on something halfway through making the video. So with the video finally released, I got back to the show and found that episode 28 is one of the funniest episodes of the whole show. And more than that, I think it is a perfect demonstration of why Gintama's comedy works so well. So I want to go through the episode with you and show how all Gintama's strengths are able to work together to make this just a really great and funny episode. The episode starts off with a joke inserted into a weather broadcast, which is a great way to lead off the episode. It is a quick one-liner, but it works well to set the mood of the episode, and having a weatherman say something so bizarre fits well with the nature of King Thomas' comedy being driven so much by sarcastic one-liners. Kanda then learns that according to Dark Astrology, that his side in Virgo is going to have the worst luck for the day, and then the show builds on that by being oddly specific about it applying worse to people with goatees and who are currently brushing their teeth, and that those people are going to die. This is again a signature of Gintama's comedy, taking something that's almost normal, then continuing to pile on the absurdity. And if you don't know, I like absurd and bizarre, hence the reason I like Gintama so much. Then we have an interesting take on the Rule of Three, with Sogo showing up offering Kondo his old red loin classic of him luck, followed by Toshi giving him a red scarf. At this point, I expected a third person to show up and give them something else that was red but weirder than the other two, like Gintoki showing up to give him a red bra. But instead we have a Matsudaria show up who is the chief of police and he attacks Kondo with some weird dialogue thrown in because weird dialogue is Gintama. This unexpected twist added to the comedy because I was not expecting it at all, but also introduced the type of character that Matsudaria is and I don't think I've seen it before so this was his introduction. And if I had seen it before but forgot, then this was a great way to reintroduce him and remind us who he is. This twist also shows that while I would expect the main character to show up here, we see that this episode is not going to have the normal main characters in a big role. More than that, it also drives the story forward with the previous episode, showing that there was an impact from the events there. From Matsudaria's word speech, we also learn more about the Shinsengumi's role in the world while getting more humor thrown, making what would normally be a boring info dump very interesting. This continues as Matsudaria and Kondo are in the car heading to headquarters, they are yelling at each other, making it funny, but also driving more info about the world home and making sure that we understand what is going on while not being overly preachy or boring. It also sets up the episode story, which as I said before, normally the episodes do have interesting stories. And this episode is not an exception, with them heading to headquarters and Matsudaria afraid that they're going to be assassinated. This has the set up to be very exciting, very serious episodes, with them trying to avoid assassins and survive. But then the show reminds us that this is Gintama, with Kondo trying to get out of a moving car and more absurd conversations about the Bushido code involving dying. It is at this point the episode gets weird. Well, maybe not all that weird for Gintama, and not that weird for later on, but still, it gets weird. The car there and crashes into a truck who is being driven by the guy I never remember the name of and Matsudaria comes to the completely logical conclusion that the guy I can't remember the name of must be an assassin so he shoots the truck causing it to blow up and then forces the driver of the car they were in out at gunpoint and takes over driving. Kondo is then forced to play the role of a straight man even though he has his quirks as well which are quite evident throughout this episode. Matsudaria then lists off all these people who he claims to be assassins showing that he's paranoid and that the rest of the episode is pretty much going to be about his reactions to all these assassins who are not really assassins. Except then we get a twist with a real assassin showing up in Sachan. Now Sachan is a notable character in the show because of how much she reminds me of Darkness from Konosuba and yes I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent here. Because I really believe that Sachan is a so much better way of doing this type of character. They both share a similar trait that they are masochistic and enjoy people yelling at them but that's basically all there is to Darkness which while funny at first got old fast. Sachan is again masochistic and enjoys being yelled at and is in love with Gintoki but she also has a number of other quirks such as being blind without her glasses and while she seems to be a good assassin she's also an idiot. Back to the topic of the episode though this is an example of how the show's length and large cast work really well together. For an episode like this they can just decide hey this person would be funny to add as a character so they can just throw them in and it does not feel out of place or waste or just derailing things at all. In fact it works even better. For example having Elizabeth walk into the street only to get hit by their car. Then we have Zoro show up. <laughs> And he is after them for hurting Elizabeth, which is funny on many layers, one of which is being built off the irony that the fact that they hurt Elizabeth was because they are rushing to avoid assassins and now they have someone trying to kill them. This is then followed with them interacting with the other sidecasts throughout the show, thinking that everyone is assassins and having absurd things happen. This is again a point where the show is able to take advantage of the large cast, allowing so many of them to show up and throw their own personality and bizarre 
traits into the comedy. And then we have the final joke of the episode, with Zura coming back, <laughs> and he blows up the cart there and with the bomb, and Gintoki thought that it was his booger, which I found just completely hilarious. Now, reading the comments, I learned that this is apparently a One Piece reference, which probably made it even funnier for fans of One Piece. This proves the point that I made in my first impression, that the referential comedy here is funny whether or not you get the reference. After this, though, the episode gets almost kind of serious, showing the disdain the Amanto have for Samurai, and we also get the impression that the warning that the Amanto gave here will probably play a role later on in the show. So this is another example of how the show's length helps that they're able to just plant the seeds for a future plot point here, or at least I assume it will be a plot point, maybe it won't be, maybe this is just another one-off thing just because they want to. So in this episode we have them drive the overall plot forward, wrap up a few things from the previous episode, explore some new and old characters a bit, and also create one of the funniest episodes of the show, at least that I've seen so far. And this is why I just love Gintama. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Tell me if you think I should do more videos like this, because I really like the idea of getting to a show like this in a way that like, I don't really want to with a normal review. And if you think I should do more videos like this, maybe give me some ideas for topics or shows you want me to explore. I can't say that I will take every suggestion people give, because, well, there are lots of shows out there, and for something like this work, I really want to have something to say about it. So yeah, if you have an idea, though, I will at least listen to you and maybe think about it. And no, I'm not going to do anything with One Piece, because no. Maybe first impressions they do at some point. We'll see. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you all next time.